Hey everyone, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Full Fill. Can we do that again? Because I was, my mouth was open. Hi everyone, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Full Fill, the, the game, game of, of life. life. Now, first of all, we hope you can actually hear us over the roaring waters here from this little village in Italy. It's called the Torrente Gorgazzo. 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 <laughs> we're not real good at this, but we're trying. We just decided that this was one of the coolest parts of the entire village once we walked around and looked at it. So we thought, what better place to film? Only if you can hear us above the water. So we're going to give this a shot. We do think it's really interesting to watch as we talked about Portugal and how the terraces were engineered throughout the country. And this little village here, the water flow has been well engineered. I'm not sure if it's on the path of the original stream that ran through the city, but you can see what they've done behind us to create these drops and they split the water off in a couple of different avenues. I'm sure it used to have very functional things such as grist mills. Well, it is beautiful and functional. That was a lot for me to say all that, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We do want to take a moment and explain to you why we're in Italy. We came to Italy to come see my son, who I hadn't seen in about three and a half years. And I am so proud to say that he is serving our country here in Italy. And I wanted to see him because he's about to leave back to the States. So before he left, I had to make sure that we took a trip all the way to Italy so Thank that you. I could Sorry. give him a hug and see him off. And we're both very proud of you and your work ethic and your diligence and uh, we're proud of you. Yes. We do also want to say we are missing Portugal. Yes, we are. Our home. Food here is at least twice the cost as it was in Portugal. The gas prices are still about the same. And as we told you, the accommodations here are about 60% higher than they were in Portugal for a studio instead of a three bedroom. So the price of living here is quite a bit different and maybe worse, more for me than it is for Christy. After almost nine weeks in Portugal, we saw it rain twice. We've been here for 11 days and it's rained nine times. And me being from the desert of Arizona, I totally enjoy the rain and the thunder. I just love it but it's just too, too unpredictable to know when you can get out, know when you can, and be prepared and all those things. So I'm missing the beautiful sunshine of Portugal, but on with the video. The good news is, is we're only about three weeks away from heading back to Portugal. We will be staying in a beachside flat in- I think it's Magoito. Magoito. Something like that, unless, unless you spelled it wrong. That's possible too. <laughs> But even with that, just so you know, we're not rushing out of Italy. Italy, just as all of Europe to someone that's new, has so many things to look at. We do have three day trips planned. And we assure you, many of you will love them. And I hear the hills are alive where we are heading. So we hope that you enjoyed video number one and number two of this series. Where we showed you the historical sites around Linares and we took you on a trip to the highest point in mainland Portugal. Serra de Estrela, right? Yes. If you think those sites were awesome, wait till you see what we're about to show you. In this video, we're going to show you the first six castles in the Aldeas de Históricas de Portugal. We'll start by saying they call this an, the official route for a reason as you soon will see. Before we kick off, we do want to remind you, please remember to hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. It really does help us. Now, we're gonna show you the villages that we visited almost in the order that we visited them. And as we promised, we're gonna rank all 12 villages from one to 12. 
So if you're short on time, you need to see the best of the best. This information will help you to get there. But make no mistake, even when you rank these things, all 12 of these things are well worth your time and well worth your visit. But if you're short on time, this should help you narrow down where you're gonna focus. We definitely plan on circling back to many of the villages that we just rushed through. We do want to have time to actually live the history because we got in such a hurry to try to get all this footage. So we will work our way back through these villages over time. So let's get going. As we left off in the last video, you saw us arriving to Peel Dow. So even though this wasn't our first village that we visited, we're gonna go ahead and cover Peel Dow and rank it. Which was actually our last stop on our trip to Serra de Estrella. As we showed you in video 26, the thing that's most striking about Pio Dao is actually the building materials change and the construction manner changes completely. It is nestled into the hillside and built with schist stone. And thank you so much to our viewers for educating us on that. And as we've remarked multiple times, the drive here and the city itself to have so many terraces built on these steep hills in order to provide food was really, really cool to see. The drive here and all of the terraces were just so amazing. Just as we showed you before in the differences video, the roofing material looks like dragon scales and we thought it was just super cool the way that it looked. Because of the, the terraces and the construction, the drive here was such a unique scenery. Yeah, so when we rank P.O. Dow, we're doing it some in the city, but somewhat for just the journey to get there. So, where did we rank P.O. Dow? We ranked it at number, number four. four. I mean, seriously, can you imagine there are three other places better than this? On to our second village. We've already showed you so much of Linares that we just thought we would plug it in here just to remind you there are so many things that we love in Linares. The castles, the overlook, the aqueduct, the houses built into the boulders. Linares has its own appeal. We really, really enjoyed staying there. The one thing that we would maybe provide feedback that we didn't really like is both towers and the castles were shut down uh, the entire visit. So we would have liked to have been able to walk into those. Maybe they open them on a schedule, but otherwise, we loved Linares and would happily spend time there again. So, we rank Linares at number, number six. six. The third village that we went to is Transcoso. But a little footage on the drive. This pond with huge granite boulders was well worth our time. Yeah, this was some of our earliest footage with Henry. Uh, it was a little bit of experimenting, but a little bit of really cool things to look at too, so why not? striking thing about Transcoso was the condition of the castle. It definitely appears to have been well maintained over the centuries. And as we entered, the steps literally walked the history for us. So that was a really, really nice touch. It definitely saved us some research, no doubt, and was much, probably much more accurate and more in depth than we would have found online anyway. So we'll just let you watch the video footage here and kind of look at the history as it scrolls by. Not only was the history on the outside, there were active excavations going on on the inside. And 
and we were able to walk up the tower and walk the walls in the castle. Yeah, I have to add this because it's really, really refreshing. Here's the reality. In the United States, if there is anything that you could potentially stump your toe on or have any sense of personal risk or any accident at all, it's going to be chained off. It, there's going to be 16 safety devices. There's going to be uh, 17 signs pointing. Please don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. And they're going to go so far out of their way to keep you from just enjoying the sights in order to ensure your personal safety. Here, it is completely different. We we're able to walk every inch of this castle. We're able to walk on the grounds. We're able to walk on the walls. Uh, we're able to walk up any step that you're daring enough to walk up. So you could kind of say America idiot proofs things. And it seems that Portugal and maybe most of Europe as well, we will come to find out. They're basically like you make your own decisions, but if you make bad decisions, you live by the consequences. So it's really refreshing because so far, I don't think either of us fit in the idiot bucket. No. So we like the freedom to walk around, to look at the walls, to walk on the walls and be adults and be treated that way. Just be careful. So the tower was open and we could go straight to the top. So cool about it was that you could see Spain from the top of the tower. Yeah, we could actually see the border cut in the trees. I'm totally just joking, but it was so cool to visit a castle that again, it had the tower completely open. You could walk on the grounds, you could walk up the tower, and you could see pretty much everything. So as we walk our way out, notice the stairs here. These stairs walk up to the tower at the very end of the castle. And I decided, you know what? I want to climb up there and look down in that. Oh my goodness, it was crazy. It was crazy. In the United States, they would have had that caged off with 17,000 safety devices because that hole was really deep. It yeah. was really deep. I let him go and explore that. I swear, it's funny, no joke. As soon as I sat on the side of that thing, like my hands start sweating, that hole was really deep but it was so cool to be able to experience that. So we really enjoyed Transcoso as a castle and as an exploration site. So where did we rank Transcoso? Number, Number five. five. This is a fantastic site to see, a well-kept castle where you can walk practically every inch. Yes, goodbye Transcoso, we really enjoyed it. We did. So we're on to our fourth village, Mar Marialva. Marialva. As we neared Marialva, it sat high upon the mountain and you could see the extensive walls. Yeah, this was one of the castles. Not very many of them could you really see uh, as you're driving in, but you could really see this when you're driving in. So you already began to admire the castle from the distance. And let us say we again we're blown away yeah this one even more than most now again without the u.s anti-lawsuit gear on we were allowed to walk every inch of this massive castle and village and i can't say massive any more strongly than i'm trying to say massive castle and village just reliving the footage of this place provokes again the excitement and the wonder. It really does. The smile on my face is just the memories of this place. This was a fantastic castle to visit. It was really awesome. The castle peak at the very end, as you see here in the footage, is at such a high altitude that it was just breathtaking. Not only breathtaking, it was at a high enough altitude that it literally was thinner air that began to take your breath and you could feel it as you're walking around. And looking down from the peak, we just sat for a moment in this silence is amazing, and it? really just tried to imagine That's the amazing. people and their daily lives. You know, honestly, more than any other castle that we visited, sitting at the peak of this castle, 
and seeing the way that the roads were constructed and the way the rooms were constructed, it was easier to visualize what daily life must have been like in this castle. Yes. As you were saying while we were there, I wonder if that's where the blacksmith was. I wonder if that's where they held the marketplace. It was just a, it was a bit more surreal than the others because you could see the city and the castle kind of commingled. And I went ahead and just let Richard walk the walls because they were so high, I wasn't getting back up there. I'm gonna tell you the sensation that you have from up here, this is so high, but it's basically almost an irrational fear. If you look right here, I mean, you're looking out, it appears that Christie's like on a cliff about to fall off, but the reality is, is the ground there is maybe 12 feet down. If you fell, you'd break something, but you wouldn't die. And on the right side, pretty much the same. Again, you'd break something, but you wouldn't die. And uh, as you continue to approach the edge with Christy, all of a sudden you see, hey, wait a minute, it's not this massive edge. It's, uh, it's just this steep staircase. Yeah, it may not look like it in some of the footage, but the walls were probably six to seven to eight feet thick. So once you got up there, there wasn't very, there wasn't very many nerves, though it was at an altitude, pretty significant altitude. Uh, there were a couple of places where the walls narrowed in, where it got a little bit more hairy to get there, uh, but I would totally walk this thing again. It was a freaking awesome experience. The history of this place also includes being settled by the Adivai, hopefully I said that right, a Lusitanian people. It was later conquered by the Romans and then the Arabs until the final victory of King Fernando the Great in his historic conquest of the Baidas in 1063. What a, what a really cool castle. As you can see as well on the grounds is a well-maintained chapel. And we could go on and on and on for another 15 minutes, but let's just get to the ranking. Yep, so where did we rank this magnificent castle? Number two. two. This place is astounding. Yes. And again, you can just see the village life as you're there. Um, it's hard to put it all into words. Yes, this was just an amazing visit. We have to find our way back here for certain. So as we wrapped up from this magnificent visit and actually started to get some oxygen back in our lungs, we decided let's get back in the car and head on down to the next castle. This river in the valley, definitely worth some drone footage and practice. Okay, on to the fifth castle, Castle Rodrigo. Now, we must admit, we learned a few hard lessons here. We arrived at Castle Rodrigo as the sun was beginning to set. And we were disappointed to see that this castle and probably most close at six o'clock. So we had to experience Castello Rodrigo from the outside looking in and through the drone flyovers. Yeah, now you can see in this footage that the inside is well staged and the castle is in a crumbling state. The good news is that the lighting and the setting sun created some really fantastic footage. Really beautiful. The way they had it lit on the inside and the sun going down over the landscape, really, really nice. So where do we rank Castillo Rodrigo? Number, Number eight. eight. Really the relative aging condition and the size being a little bit smaller dropped it down the list for us. But make no mistake, guys, this village is seriously well worth your time. Absolutely. You know, it really does stink to have to rank such an awesome site this low, but it speaks to the grandeur of the seven above it. And on to the sixth village of this trip, Almeida. Upon arrival, Almeida was a noticeably different structure. This fortress was built to a newer military standard and is a bastioned fortress. 
with a hexagonal star pattern. It has six bastions with their bunkers and underground galleries where the people hid when danger came close to the castle. Now, a little bit of side note on this. The traditional towers were gone, though there were remnants of the ancient castle here. This reminded me very much of Fort Pulaski and the forts around St. Augustine, Florida. Yeah, I just remember one piece of information when I toured Fort Pulaski many years ago. They told the story that Fort Pulaski was the last low, thick-walled fort built in the United States because of the invention of rifled artillery. Because cannonballs prior to rifled artillery were definitely damaging, but they weren't accurate enough to hit the same spot on the wall continuously. And the invention of rifled artillery made the walls obsolete because they could hit the same spot over and over, destroying the walls in a really quick amount of time. So, Elmida was seriously by far the largest structure we had seen by far and away. The only way we could really get a look at it was with Henry. It was that large. It would take you a whole week to really explore how large this structure was. But before we tell you our ranking, understand that the structure and the care of the structure was awesome. The size was also crazy impressive. But the modernization of the structure made it less appealing for me personally as I'm captured by the history of the castle. So seriously, with mixed emotions and the impacts of our likes and dislikes, we ranked Almeida 10th. I know that's way down the list. This is such a magnificent place to visit and you will enjoy it if you make it there. But again, it kind of is just our likes and dislikes that moved it here. So there you have it guys, the first six villages of the Aldeas Históricas de Portugal. Geez, you say that so well, and I say it so slow. <laughs> it is worth noting that the position of these castles along the Spanish border. So we haven't really read much on the history of Spain and Portugal, but the castles point too many years of conquest and defense. Yeah, I'm sure that it was continuous, that there are castles on both sides, and I'm sure that a lot of viewers will actually comment below and help edu educate us more on that history. And we absolutely love it when you guys Give us a lot of historical information on the sites that we cover. Yes, thank you so much for taking the time to type those comments. And make no mistake, we look forward to reading them. Absolutely. So, this wraps up the first six of the 12 villages. So, if you like this video, you are going to love the last video of this series where we rank the remaining six villages. So, go ahead, give us a thumbs up, and remember to hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss the next video where we will show you our number one village. With a real live tie to Game of Thrones. Is that not cool? That is super cool. I Thank love that. Thank you for coming along on the journey and we hope to see you in the next video. Until next time, adios. Adios. Ciao. Ciao. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Well, I'm always behind. <laughs>